Hi, my name is Darius Williams. This is Firsthand Accounts for One Place Studies. We're going to talk about some different sources that you can look at in addition to the normal records that we typically use for family history and genealogy. So as we think about most of the research that we do, um, we've generally been directed to census records, church records, probate records, things that um, are physical documents that have details about ancestors and people that lived in their neighborhood uh, at a specific point in time. And we can flesh these out and give more context and detail to the information in those records by looking for firsthand accounts, such as diaries, personal histories, and even government inquiries. Court records are good for these also. They're a little less detailed, but there's some good pieces of information we can get there. And for uh, people in the last hundred years, there's a possibility of uh, obtaining oral histories that were done at some point in the past, and even still doing some now. So local histories and for Wales, Esteth Vaadai uh, are a possible source for getting more of this personalized type of information. So the Tom Sawyer approach that I like to refer to is finding a way to get somebody else to paint our fence for us. And as we're looking at gathering uh, firsthand accounts, one thing that we can do is read the bibliographies and footnotes in the books that we uh, refer to, uh, whether it's a national history, local history, uh, there's often something that's been utilized to put that history together that can get us a little bit closer to things like these firsthand accounts. Now, the British Theses Online website, the Ethos website, gives us a really good opportunity to tap into the research that um, advanced studies students have uh, gone to. And there's a great amount of those that are available to download for free if you use the website that's listed here on the screen. WorldCat is another resource that uh, is often uh, linking to resources like this. And it, in addition, it will show you the closest library to where you live that has that resource, that book. I'm going to show you how to use Family Search Memories and the Family Search Wiki to identify some of these sources also and other things that have been uh, made available online. So if we go to the Family Search website and go to the Memories tab, there's an option to search those memories. Now, not all of the memories in the Family Search family tree have been labeled or tagged so that you can find them with this feature, but it's an excellent way to start. And I typically start with a place name. So in this case, the parish where I'm doing my one place study, San Gug in Glamorgan. There are 24 different memories that have been tagged or labeled well enough for the search to find it. Even if you'd find some interesting things, it's still worth going in and searching the uh, family tree for people that lived in your place and see if there are memories attached to them that don't show up in this search. And I guarantee there are many. So the thing that was exciting about this particular entry is that uh, I've got a new person that I can, can contact to collaborate with. He's definitely got an interest in the parish. He's at the parish church and has identified the family name that he's interested in. And so by clicking on his name here in the memories, I can contact him and, and hopefully start to collaborate. Maybe if I'm lucky, get a little more information through him and maybe work on some things with him. The next thing I want to show is the Family Search Wiki. In the wiki, we have a page for every country related to social life and customs. So you can do a search for the name of the country that you're researching in and the topic social life and customs. Every country's got one of these pages. 
And you can sort these pages by any of the column headings. You can sort that, or you can just browse through and look at these. And they'll have a variety of time periods, date, date ranges that are covered, and availability. Many of these are linked through with the title, and that will take you uh, sometimes to Google Books or the Hottie Trust, and often it will take you to WorldCat so that you can see where the closest copy of that book is to you. Some of my favorites in these uh, this topic of um, diaries and things is uh, No One But a Woman Knows. Uh, the Old Farmhouse by D.J. Williams is one of my very favorite because he identifies some of the uh, living conditions and the way that the people interacted with each other within uh, rural Wales in Camarth northern Carmarthenshire. And he talks about how their naming customs were used. And this was in the mid to late 1800s. And so there was a lot of social change and a lot of uh, practices that changed within a short period of time after he grew up and moved away. But he records that and talks about how farm families lived, interacted, worked together. And so he sets a stage that uh, very few sources do that I've found identifying how these families lived and worked together. And he tells some wonderful stories for that area. Uh, Ask the Fellows Who Cut the Hay by George Ewart Evans is a really good one that applies to England, but it will give you a taste of how local people lived. So any of these sources could be very valuable, whether it's the topic or the uh, occupation or the exact place where your ancestor lived. And it's just a matter of doing some digging and seeing what's available for the area that you're interested in. Some, like no one but a woman knows, um, these. this one was edited by Margaret Davies. She got letters from ladies all over the England and Wales and published those. Some of those are just heart-wrenching in the detail and, and the difficult lives that our forebears led. So it gives a sense that we can't ever get from just the records like census and uh, probate. And so these are very, very valuable. The, the problem I've found is that this particular book has information from people all over from Manchester, from uh, London, from Wales. And so you don't really know how close it's gonna apply to your place, but it does give you a really strong sense of how people lived, even if it's not specifically for your place. And it'll give you ideas on other areas uh, or ways to search for materials that will apply more directly to your place. And to end, I wanted to share this uh, diary that I found from David Davies. He was a bookbinder, and he started keeping his diary while he was still an apprentice. And he lived in the north on the north side of Swansea. And even though that's not part of my one place study, he lived close enough and dealt with some of the situations that people in my uh, area in in Shangug would have dealt with, and he did make some visits there. In the on this page of his diary, he actually identifies Joe Morgans, who's uh, uh, given identified as being from the farm of Gefiluka, which is in my parish of Shangug, and it's uh, part of my one place study. And so even though this didn't apply directly, specifically to my place, there was information that does apply to my place. And so we need to broaden out and look a little bit wider sometimes, and we'll be rewarded with the information that we can find. Good luck with your searches. Thank you. Bye.